Knaz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. While I was basking in the brilliance of our panelists, I got called out, and I, I um, beg your forgiveness, um, to attend a meeting on, um, on homelessness from the state of Arizona. And it's sort of a reality check. Um, I was thinking about how great it is being on this committee and how wonderful to have these panelists. And then you have to step out to a meeting and, and talk to folks who represent your community, people that don't have enough food to eat and don't have shelter. So it's, um, it's a real challenge. I mean, I, I, um, I think about Dr. Hawkins, who I had a chance to meet um, you, sir, um, last year when you were presented the medal that was flown on STS-123 over um, at the Royal Society, which was amazing. Um, Senator Glenn, you are an inspiration to all of us and in the private and the public sector, and Dr. Um, excuse me, Mr. Augustine for everything you've done in the with your work with the National Academies, of course, and in the private sector, and Dr. Zuber, thank you. Um, we love having particularly women in science as a woman in a, a non-traditional field as well. It's really important that um, we have everyone represented. So I guess my question is, and, um, and I just want to cut straight you know, down to it, how are we going to do this? I, um, over the weekend, had a chance to present a state of the economy to a lot of people in my district, um, talked about where we were in terms of debt and deficit, and I also wove in there a lot about math scores in Arizona and the country, fourth grade math scores, eighth grade math scores, twelfth grade. I mean, we as a nation have to get going right now. And for the smartest people on this committee and our, our panelists, how are we going to do that? How are we going to say to the next generation, we are going to keep the standard of life, the, the, the beauty, the vision of this country headed in the right direction? And so I, um, I know we don't have a lot of time. You only have five minutes to answer those questions. But I turned it over to our panelists to tell us how, how we're going to make this happen. Let me begin. Uh, great question. Uh, I guess I'd begin by observing that 96 percent of the uh, workforce in this country are not scientists and engineers. But the 4 percent that are are the ones who create the jobs disproportionately that help solve homeless problems and provide the money. And so I think what is your question, what is it we should do, I'll offer two highest priority. One is we ought to greatly increase the science budget in this country so that we have new discoveries and we create new products and create jobs for people. Uh, the second is that uh, we need to get teachers in our classrooms all the way down to first grade who understand math and science and who have a primary degree in that core field so that they can answer the questions that children ask so they can inspire, inspire them so that they can tell them why what they're doing is relevant. I think those are the two highest priority things that we should do. Thanks for a great question. Okay, well, NASA itself can't solve all of the education problems in the country, but they can certainly contribute. Um, the decision kids have to make, and I think it comes when they're uh, between elementary school and middle school, is do they keep taking the harder math courses or do they go the easier route? And, um, and they need to see something out there that gives them the feeling that putting in the extra effort to take the harder math course or the harder science course is worth their while. So in that sense, keeping discovery in uh, space science, earth science, and in fact all science, I think is key uh, in that endeavor. And I just want to uh, echo Mr. Augustine's comment that having teachers in science and math who are actually science and math majors and who understand those disciplines deeply and who have opportunities for career enhancement in summer programs, uh, that is, you know, one of the best investments that this country could make. This uh, it's a very good question, and it always comes up about uh, whether we should solve the problems that exist now before we put money into research where we don't know for sure what the answer will be. Is that wasteful? And that's basically the, the questions you asked, I think. It seems to me that our, our research in this country, if there's one thing we've learned throughout our history, it's that uh, money spent on research has a way of paying off in the future, usually beyond anything we see at the outset. And not every aspect of that research is, is productive, but enough of it's productive that that's how we moved ahead. Uh, what we're saying by research is curiosity. And every single advance that humans have ever made has been because somebody was curious about how could we do things new way and do them differently, and, and uh, whether it's a microphone or whatever it is, uh, can't we improve on this? 
And somebody had that kind of curiosity in looking into the unknown. Uh, an example, you, you mentioned the problems of the homeless. Uh, very concerned about that, too, uh, back home in my home state of Ohio. But we, uh, we, uh, an example of this might be in feeding the homeless, even. In the, look what's happened in agriculture. In the early days of this country, we had 95 or 96 percent of our people involved in agriculture to support the population. We're down now to about 2.8 uh, percent of our people give surpluses that are enormous, so much so that we pay people not to produce. And that was because of research on hybrids and on soil and on fertilizer, seeds, just the whole across the whole panoply of about eight or nine different uh, things that go into that consideration in agriculture. And people thought maybe at that time it was goofy. Why did we have to do that kind of stuff? We're looking into fertilizers, for heaven's sakes, on the farm. It's always been okay, but yet we improved them enough that we have more increased production, and that does benefit the homeless now. So it seems to me taking a, a long-term view of what may come out of research is uh, the way we should go. The lady's time has expired, and let me just point out, uh, Ms. Gifford, uh, in response to your question, I th think there was concurrence that we need to be able to uh, help educate our educators in terms of their core knowledge in the math and science areas, uh, as well as make an increased investment uh, within our science research. Well, this committee and Congress has passed that legislation. The President signed it last year. We have that authorization in the, in the Competes Bill now. We, we need to fund it. We've got, we've got the roadmap. And